Wallace here and I hope he will uh, tell us interesting news about what he's doing, what he's done in the past and where his uh, road goes. Thank you for um, having me and uh, welcome. I'm glad to, glad to be on and uh, talk about your guys uh, awesome awesome product yeah i um i came from a you know just a the, one of the classic story i came from a small town in the east coast um blue collar mm -hmm. um uh, i've always been interesting interested in art and and just creating things uh fast forward to moving down to florida for film school um and okay. just started to to dive into, um, that was actually when I was introduced to s software that I could actually make things and, and uh, expand my creative um, thinking. So, uh, what software did you start with back then? Well, they had a a uh, it was a more of a digital design course, so it was more of an experimental phase of uh, uh, there was they were kind of testing out this uh, this type of digital media course, right. so. They they would introduce you to things like After Effects, um, mm -hmm. Photoshop, all the all the kind of basic stuff you need to know to get started. And then 3D Max was when I was actually that was when I first got introduced to it. Uh, I only spent about one or two months learning the basics, mm -hmm. uh, and I think because of that introduction course, it, I I always had that to start with for a 3D package. Uh, before that, I knew nothing about 3D or <laughs> any kind of, I didn't. I didn't know anything about any kind of a digital, digital art or design media uh, platform. Before that, I was just drawing on paper. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, that that kind of uh, jump started my, my, my career in creation. Uh, then eventually, I moved to California because I knew that 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 was where you had to be really. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. From there, it was just all. A sequence of events, or a sequence of, of, just growing my career and and expanding my my skill set, and then that was when I, I finally got introduced to Thinking Particles because I remember seeing um, it was that that I think that's famous video. It's this car car paint ripping off. Uh huh. Okay, that was yeah, our like, Matter Waves, our very yeah. first try at particle systems in Max. Yeah. Yeah, I, I it still to this day sticks in my head, and I. Probably thought it was the coolest thing, and I'm sure many people. Um, that was a catalyst for most people to, or most artists, to get into it as well. Because uh, if you talk to most thinking particle artists uh, who've been into into the software for this long, I, I'm willing to bet that they they would probably all see that they've already uh, they've um, they would reference back to that. Mm -hmm. It was just the coolest thing, and I I was so curious, and I was it was I was glad to know that it was in 3D Max mm -hmm. since I already. <laughs> knew it and, and was able to uh, to use that so I just do dove in and um, and I remember I, I'd always get to a point in the software where I would just kind of give up because um, my I'm not a programmer or scripter um, I'm just I'm really visually based mm -hmm. and I just remember being just the learning curve was incredible for me I mean yeah. I, I didn't understand logic or uh, rule based logic at all so I would always kind of give up, go back to it, and then um, I knew I knew particle flow, so I'd always reach a, a ceiling with that. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually, I just said, you know, what? I'm just gonna bite the bullet, and <laughs> I just devoted months just to learn it really well. So okay, that's good. <laughs> uh, and uh, and then from there, it's just uh, studios, and I got hired for some studios in Hollywood, and eventually, one of them moved me up to Vancouver, and here I am. Okay, that's cool. So, what was the first studio you worked with? Uh, for film, it was Hydraulics. Hydraulics. Okay. Yes. So before that, I was actually working for in marketing and advertising. So I'd be I'd be in. Um, Do you remember what you did at Hydraulics? What what uh, movie was that? Yeah, actually, my first uh, actual film feature film was Looper. Ah, okay. Yeah, and Adventures. So Looper uh, and Adventures, were, they worked on both those. Um, and I was able to, to come in and just knock it out. So, yeah, that was the, I remember it was a Looper. It was a jet bike I did. I remember doing a, a turntable, that thing. Just, um, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> That's cool. And from then on, where, where did you end up uh, then after hydraulics? Uh, after hydraulics, I actually took a, 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 a took off from there for a bit, went to Pixelmundo uh, for mm -hmm. a couple months. Uh, and then went back to hydraulics and then that's when they they moved me up here um, I was here for or I was at hydraulics Maybe for close to a year. Oh, okay, and it, while I'm in Vancouver, so total about two years there um, then I moved to scanline at the middle of 13 mm-hmm yeah and okay. then from there yeah now it's now here I, I am. guess and at scanline you had the real big things to do does yeah, the, yeah. Scanline it, does really uh, the, yeah. the large scale stuff. So somehow oh, yeah. they they like it, and they have their own software as well integrated, and they do all kinds of cool stuff. So oh yeah, oh yeah. They, that that uh, I mean that place is, you know, if you talk to, to dynamics artists, simulation guys, I mean it's really the that's the place to be for. It. And I, I was I was fortunate enough to to be able to be part of that team. At that time, and mm -hmm. I mean, the uh, I think the recipe for knowing 3D Max and thinking particles and, and dynamics, um, and having a love for just blowing things up and destruction, <laughs> yeah. uh, really fit well. And timing yeah. was right, so uh, it's just an awesome experience at Scanline. I mean, just my my uh, skill set just exponentially expanded from that I mean the, the artist the talent there is just absolutely incredible so you, um, I understand so you learned as well new stuff from the other guys there because oh yeah. I, I know the the scanline team or the people there they are just amazing it's it's just unbelievable what they can pull off and how creative they are so oh yeah yeah I mean uh, I think you know you 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 probably see this the best. You um, you'll update the software. You come up with new tools, and um, I'm interested to to see where you think, cause or how you feel. I could just picture you you releasing something new, and then waiting to see how you know, guys like us at at Scanline would uh, would use it and harness it in a, in yeah. a way that you know no one could really think of. And that that was fun too, because uh, we'd always <laughs> we'd always just be giddy. Yeah, finding a new release and then everyone gets excited and starts doing something with it um, but yeah I mean I learned so many different techniques that I could never never have thought on my own to do um, in effects I mean it you just see that different perspective from all those those different uh, yeah all that different talent and you'd be like I never thought about it that way You're like that's so you, you you take a step back and you'd have all these different uh, approaches to an effect or um, a shot that it's just that's how you learn really that's how I learned that much at Scanline too because yeah uh, everyone has their 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 own way of approaching something and yeah. you were able to I was able to to get exposed to that and right. that really expanded my way of, of building rigs and becoming more efficient and taking something um, so big and uh, just having uh, making sure you're, you you approach it in the simplest way but make it look the most detailed so so um is it like y you feel you can do everything or or do you have sometimes when the shots come in where you say are they crazy we can't do this shit or <laughs> how, how do you or or it, it, does that never happen do you think you can always do uh, stuff with the tools and the team you have there or oh yeah actually that's a good question um because uh yeah i mean before if it was, uh, I mean, every, everyone looks at at uh, at this at, at especially Scanline. Everyone looks at uh, a situation like another opportunity. And the best part about that is, no matter how big the scale is, uh, we we never doubt ourselves at all. We never we never question it. Um, um, you know, it's maybe sometimes with the timeline and deadlines that that might come yeah. into. Like, you know, if something, if they had this, you know, X amount of shots due in X amount of days and that, that's one thing, but the, um, the technical ability to, to, to be able to, um, achieve something that is asked or, um, is that, that was never a question. Like we, we'd always been able to be able to come up with something no matter how insane or complex or yeah, impossible I, it seems. Yeah, I, I was thinking about the the sequences in Independence Day, the the city destruction or the yeah. 
uh, inverse gravity stuff where the uh, cars, buildings, and whatever gets pulled up and, and crashes down. Um, if I would see the shot, uh, I would run away and say, oh, leave me alone, I'm not doing that. Are you insane? So do, do you remember how big was the team for, for these uh, shots? Uh, how many people were there involved? Well, I'm sure there's many times that we, plenty of us wanted to do the same thing. We just want to crawl <laughs> in the corner and turn off the lights um, and let someone else deal with it. But, uh, but you pulled it off and it was amazing. It's, it's, yeah. And even the, the, the making of uh, Joe Scar showed. Yep. Um, it's just insane. It's just when you see the, the, the gray renderings where you actually realize, oh, shit, this is really all yeah. simulated. Yeah. These are all fragments. These Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's insane. So yeah, so, uh, and it's uh, that that team was, um, oh, to answer your uh, last question, at, um, yeah, the, um, for that, I mean, for the whole Independence Day, I think the, at one point there was the whole effects team was, uh, you know, had to had to dive in and be able to to figure some stuff out. But yeah. uh, on average, there could there, there couldn't have been maybe a handful of effects guys. Just we're, we're speaking about just effects and dynamics. Yeah. Um, there's a, I'd say maybe half dozen flow line uh, mm -hmm. fluids, um, maybe a good eight eight or nine. Uh, effects artists, yeah. uh, just kind of working around the clock. Um, but uh, and then and then there would be, you know, since since there'd be a lot of the parallel shows uh, working at the same time, there'd be yeah. you know we'd have the resources of, of being able to use you know ten ten guys on effects. Okay. And, and something else comes down the road, and we have to cut that down to three guys. So we have to figure out how to how to get something out with only three uh, artists, yeah. and then we kind of go back. So. Uh, but yeah, this it, it, taking a look back at it. Um, that sounds intense. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's once you once you get past the whole building the rig phase and and getting a look down, it's it's a lot it's a lot more clear water from there. You can just uh, sort of smoother sailing. Yeah, kind of just plug and play sort of. So. Yeah, but you ha have to get the setup right. And and we ha just had recently a, a little promotion with uh, um, Goran. He did uh, in his uh, promotion, uh, he showed how he created the trees or yeah. creates trees in TP. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another thing where, where that reminds me on you where you said you also learned from the team and how the other guys do it because I would never dream of setting up a tree in TP. <laughs> I know yeah. you can do that and I know how in theory you would do that but oh boy that's <laughs> that needs some uh, dedication to do it and yeah. yes I, I understand that our software can do that but do you think we we thought that you would uh, build trees and have spline <laughs> dynamics for tree uh, twigs and and leaves attached to it and yeah. joint it? That's insane. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's all it's <laughs> yeah. Surpri always surprises us what what you guys do. It's it's just amazing this cool. uh, stuff you come up with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And then you you are no longer you you're still not uh, no longer with uh, Scanline, right? You you move to a new uh, venture. So what are you doing now, or where where you're heading yeah. now? Yeah, that's correct. Um, I'm at uh, it's it is so yeah. It's called uh, Dark Horse Ten uh, Pictures. Um, okay. But so um, and at its core, it's it's more of a um, uh, film production company. Okay. Um, so we have, uh, and our relation, it's it's it was built on a relationship with a Chinese um, visual effects company. So uh, Jason Dodswell, um, he's I don't know if you 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 know him, but uh, he's he's pretty recognized in the industry. He's mm -hmm. been around um, in the production uh, visual effects company. So he 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 uh, him and a uh, uh, Greg Herbert. He was a CFO at Image Engine. So mm -hmm. they partnered up and partnered with a Chinese entity. They were able to, to create Dark Horse 10. Um, he pulled me in as a FX supervisor and upcoming v VFX sup, uh, supervisor mm -hmm. for some, some new Chinese projects. Okay. So, yeah. Um, 
So, but you're still based in Vancouver, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. it's just a couple blocks down from Scanline, actually. Oh, okay. So, yeah, um, yeah, it's, I, um, I love. I, I'm, I'm still creating at the box. I'm not, um, I'm not totally moving away from that. But I think, I think I just felt the timing was right, and and I wanted to just uh, venture out a little bit, mm -hmm. um, kind of take a break from what I was doing before, which was, which was dedicated dynamics work yeah i want to kind of branch out and and take the reins a little bit more mm -hmm. and this is what gave me that opportunity i just want to try my just dip my feet in the in the water of international uh film i guess so, yeah which is another reason too i i uh i wanted to, to branch out internationally a little bit more so mm -hmm. i just got back from beijing on in there um, in our sister company's uh studio so I was there for three weeks, uh, okay. training the artists over there, introducing them to heavier effects work and dynamics. Okay, cool. So you, you have to interact a lot with uh, Chinese artists and Chinese management as well, or or how is the setup working? Or yeah, so that that is uh, what we exactly we it's it's to build a relationship and build that bridge of communication between North American production and Chinese production so mm -hmm. uh, mainly because mainly the reason this was built is started was the to, to, to bind those two together and and uh, pretty much have both of us working tandem on Chinese and North American projects okay so you will build up a team in Vancouver as well then yes that's yes. the idea ah, okay yeah. Okay, and and you you will do now more Chinese productions, or you're you're still into Hollywood uh, productions or effects, or what's uh, the we, idea? We still have uh, a lot of North American work coming in. Mm -hmm. We're actually currently working on some some projects now. Um, uh, some bigger ones are coming up, but we uh, uh, we do have um, uh, some IP content. So mm -hmm. intellectual property, and that's that's another great thing about this place too. Is we we're eventually going to, to focus more on our own content. Oh, okay. So Dark Horse and Plusmos over in, in China, they they own the rights to a couple of very popular Chinese uh, story and lore. Mm -hmm. So that that's also gaining huge interest in uh, distribution with other bigger uh, North American companies or production uh, production companies so it's uh, some big names big uh, co-producers behind it Alibaba Wanda um, and that's that's another reason that interests me about this place too is we we have more creative control over our own content too so it's not we're, we're not just a full on service yeah. house we we own the rights to this property which is pretty cool so um I guess you you have a normal office space in Vancouver, and uh, how is the the hardware setup working? So you, I, I guess you have uh, workstations, some uh, people sitting there. H how big is the team right now in Vancouver? Yeah, yeah, we have uh, we have a nice spot. Um, it's over on uh, Canby, Rob, mm -hmm. it's right next to the stadium. But and it's uh, right now, uh, and it's got. About 30 40 people already oh wow and, yeah and we started with uh, it's it's cool because we started with you know just a couple months ago it was down to you know ex excluding production uh, we were down to about five artists mm -hmm. and uh, we've expanded this this much so uh, we have our main systems guy in Beijing building mm -hmm. their their infrastructure mm -hmm. so um, the idea is to have both of our pipelines interchangeable uh, by the middle of this year, or the end of end of this year, um, just so we have we're all connected to the same pipeline, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, from bait from China to North America, okay. which and I which I believe is the first of its kind in this industry. Yeah, so. but it would make sense to me to to have everything on on the same. Uh, line and uh, that, that should be much easier to uh, just work back and forth with uh, yeah oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. and, that, and that's people. the idea with this where 
That's uh, we're building the we're building a system to be able to handle that. Yeah, and to have that ease of access. And uh, you you have three D Studio Max, uh, obviously because of the visual effects with thinking particles. Uh, anything else you use uh, or plan to use there? Yeah, we are experimenting with um, uh, with uh, Isotropics Clarice. Okay. Um, pretty powerful uh, system. Um, it's the idea is to have that for our layout, uh, mm -hmm. lighting, and rendering setup. So we have a Linux and Windows based pipeline that are inter are connect to each other. Okay. Uh, and the idea is because we have uh, we've got a whole team of concept designers who use software that I was on Windows. I'm mm -hmm. on 3D Max is on Windows or FX would would be on Windows. So. Um, and everything else is Linux based. So um, the idea is to have Clarice is the is the end, or that's that's down at the end of the pipeline. So yeah. whatever package we use, I think Maya, Thinking Particles, um, Houdini, even to get the to once the data's and to, to bring the data into Clarice. So at the end, so mm -hmm. a rigid body information, Alembics, uh, VDB info. Mm -hmm. Light it, render it, layout, and then we have it all set up in there. Yeah. So we're yeah. experimenting with that. Uh, it's got it's pretty strong right now. It's been working pretty well. So, but yeah, definitely uh, thinking particles, full on effects mm -hmm. uh, pipe. Yeah. We got, yeah, we got some scripts that are that are being able to introduce that into our pipeline too. Yeah, uh, that that's one thing we we are now uh, seeing more and more is is uh, to interchange stuff and and uh, load in uh, data, save out data, and and all this. So we are also concentrating more and more uh, in that area where we just check and look what's used out there. How do they transfer their volume data? How do they transfer? their mesh data and and all these kind of things so yeah we are also concentrating and, and trying to improve on that side for thinking particles great yeah, yeah it, it it feels like it too i mean just just the alembic export you added is great it's awesome um the way it outputs and that that that's been that's been really helpful too because we're trying to keep it all alembic based uh for all the data so and it, it Alembic works. I mean, it's you, you can use. It's got camera, uh, point cloud data, hard surface. It's it's pretty powerful. So yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, can you tell us about any uh, crazy project you had where you ran into some issues, but eventually you could solve them, or do you have a, a story in mind where you really? hit a wall and then you manage to <laughs> survive somehow you mean in the past uh, last yeah. projects yeah a anything that stands out can do you, do you ah, how, how, what I wonder is how do you deal with um, these memory uh, limits or bandwidth in general when you you can put everything in caches you can create terabytes of caches but still this is taking some time some mm -hmm. serious time yeah and yeah the when we produce for Hollywood this needs to look cool and and really uh, to the spot so uh, as soon as you transfer to your high-res models uh, no matter what you do in the end this stuff has to go through the pipeline in the end it's your high risk model hmm. not your low risk model i understand that you can set up all your dynamics with low risk models go through with the simulations and all this stuff and later put on top the high poly stuff but even that um i always wonder how can you pull that off with the 3d studio max pipeline because out there in the industry Everyone says, oh, you have to use a Maya pipeline or you have to use uh, another software pipeline to, to get these huge data sets uh, pumped through and all this. But obviously, uh, Scanline can do it, and I'm sure you will do it with your uh, new uh, venture as well, the new company you're working uh, there. Um, so I always imagine there must be some some wall you hit where you just say okay now <laughs> what do we do now uh, yeah actually that's a that's a really good question um that and i i uh, it's funny you say that because i that is probably the number one question uh that 
either smaller studios or upcoming artists, dynamics artists ask because it is probably at the end of the day the most that that's the most challenging part about it. Um, and when I when I was in China and Taiwan actually recently, uh, I got a tour of uh, some smaller studios over there, and that that was the number one question that they all had is mm-hmm. when when you have something when you have something that you have like you created you, you you start to get the ball rolling, you know yeah in what what state of the production do you transfer to high res or you have to deal with um, with all the, the complex data and and the bottlenecks and everything like how do you guys deal with that and um, it's I think being at Scanline especially uh, it was it I was able to along with all the others to the focus mainly was really optimization and how to and it I think the answer is when you do deal with all this this massive amount of data and information, um, even at, at a level of a dynamics standpoint, it's just uh, it comes down to managing managing your um, just managing the data, managing mm-hmm. yeah. the scene, and managing how much uh, managing your time and and all that. It's just like it's like uh, man, it's like saving for you're saving money and and not not being able to. To go broke, you, the best way to do it is, is manage your money. Um, how do you manage your time? And yeah. Uh, so, so did you use a lot of the hierarchical caching thing? Uh, we have uh, yeah. implemented this where you can have a cache of a cache, and and it just uh, triples down or or actually tri- triples up, um, trickles up uh, where the data you cache the the lowest, then the next, then the yes. next, then yeah. the next. So you try to. Uh, um, set one state and say okay that's it dynamics are done for this now uh yeah next yeah. layer next layer next layer and, and so up so i, I yeah, guess you yeah. use that a lot to to even oh, yeah. handle all oh, this yeah. madness oh yes um and it's just it's that's that's the thing it's managing your cache data uh so you start with i think the the, the best the biggest uh, part for me the first thing i think about is is um moving backwards so I will take something and then uh, reconstruct it in reverse so I will I will I'll picture a picture a big massive simulation and I'll figure out um, what's what's the quickest way to get something out quickest way to see results and it used to be and sometimes it still is which I it's it's it, te- it will be it tends to be a bad habit for artists to do is they they pump everything in at once and mm-hmm. try to see the best result first. Um, I try to strip everything down, make it as simple as possible, even basic shapes, because um, the idea is you just want to you want to create uh, you want to start with creating a first basic sense of motion. So, yeah. for example, those the buildings in, in Independence Day, um, you don't just load up all high res stuff automatically and, and just hit simulate. And just hit sim, you, you know, I, I build a very basic cage, um, and it's just like uh, it's just a blocking pass, and it's just like previs. Mm-hmm. So you build something real basic. Maybe you have a, a somewhat complex joint system, and you start to, and that starts to evolve, and you build on that. But yeah. um, it's always starting off where some very simple, and then then you start to you want you want to you want to build something to get the quickest amount of inter- iterations out as possible. So and then you can you can start to on top of that make it more complex. Mm-hmm. So once it gets past an approval process, then you can start to build more on it. So as long as you get across the point of what you're trying to achieve yeah. and get that approved, then you can start to move on. But definitely managing it with the um, hierarchy of the cash, best yeah. thing. It's the best ever. So I usually I, I mean I've had I've had a set of maybe a dozen cash uh, uh, cash steps so it's yeah. you know so zero <laughs> one two three it goes all the way up to 12 sometimes uh, okay. I've, I've seen artists I've seen artists pump everything into one dynamic set and cash that whole thing out and it takes a couple hours and you can't do anything with it you know yeah it's not it doesn't the results you don't like and and I think that's very it's a very inefficient way to work especially when you are dealing with this high amount of data and uh, these massive shots so again, it's just it, 
and it's funny too because I've seen some of the best and the coolest looking work um, at Scanline, for example, from just certain artists, mm -hmm. and with the most simplest setup. Yeah. So I've seen, and again, I've seen really cool stuff with very complex setup, but. Then you see someone over engineering a setup and, and just <laughs> spending so much time and energy building all these controllers and rules and it's just the results don't don't look that great. They look over complicated, they look uh, too linear and too, uh, they just don't look uh, organic enough. So I yeah. think if you're not getting the results you need, if you're if you're overburdened, if you're, if you're getting anxious, uh, deadlines starting to reveal, just take a step back and make it simple, strip it down and that's really, I think, the the powerful part about how, what I learned in Scanline, especially. So. Yeah, yeah. And I also saw uh, some uh, um, scene files for debugging when people think there's a, a bug in our software or problem, and and then I see complex setups where I just t need some time to understand what is the basic idea behind it and why did they do it. And sometimes I'm, I'm just getting lost, not understanding at all, <laughs> because there is no real logic behind it that yeah, I, yeah. I can realize or see. And uh, for example, they use very often things like a P search. So um, I, I, I we implemented this feature because uh, people like you guys from Scanline asked for it, but it's it's a heavy it's it's a really heavy expensive. feature expensive yep. feature functionality that you really need to be careful yep. and it needs to be really worth using it because yeah. if you yeah. yes i know yeah. you can search everything around the particle but remember this is particle per particle per particle so it's a it's an avalanche of of calculations that you with this little operator you just uh, create an avalanche and then you have to wait sometimes especially when you create new particles and and all this uh, stuff so <laughs> yeah. i see that very often where you can just you can get away without a p search you can do the same setup without a p search it might look maybe yeah. a little bit different but it runs in real time. Yeah. You, you see the Im instant results. Yes, with P search, it's all nice and you have your distances and can do something on the exact distances. But you need to be careful because it is taking some time to calculate. Oh, yeah. Do all these calculations, yeah. especially when we're talking about 30,000, 100,000 particles, where every particle with every particle is measuring the distances and uh, doing intersection testing with. Um, faces around the particles so that that easily explodes in in calculation time so. <laughs> yeah oh yeah um and that's that's another thing too i'd like i i try to i try to show people too is it's uh, exactly on your point um you have the you have the ability and control to do anything you want and if you have you've got this you've got a very short window of time to to make these things um to build these things and and calculate them, and yeah, P search. I like P. I love P search, and I actually use it a lot. But again, you have to be able to know how to be efficient with it. So yeah. <laughs> if you're going to use P search, um, the you know you have to think what's if I'm going to be using this, how what's the most efficient way of using it? Yeah. And you know you one one thing to do is to, if you're just going to evaluate on the first frame, you know sometimes the the most time, the most you use P search for is to, to search just once, because that's usually yeah. what I do is I'll search just once and then and then I don't need it anymore. So I'll use um, a uh, particle age for the first frame. Mm -hmm. So what it does, yeah. it'll search, it'll evaluate the first frame, and it finds what it needs, and then I have the data, and that's it. Yeah. Um, and then it, on from there. But some people don't really understand that, and then they'll let it evaluate over and over and yeah. over. And that's that creates that becomes really expensive. And another. Yeah great thing about p-search is instead of your found uh, particle you could do found nearest particle yeah that, that will uh, I'm not I can't really explain the, the technical part about it but I understand that it just uses a threshold right it doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't expand even if you um, extend the radius yeah so it, it creates a, a damper on on where it's, where it's searching for so that's another efficient way of using it yeah um, and it's another thing is too is, is creating a radius and um, and you just really have to zone down to yeah. <laughs> to what exactly do you need it for, and and not just because it's a kind of a lazy tool if you 
if you don't yes. want to do, if you don't <laughs> want to focus on on what you really need, you could just let that run. But you're going to come into calculation. Uh, yeah, but if you want to do stuff like in Independence Day, you have to know what you're doing. So. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And just. <laughs> And that's another thing that Joe Scar taught me. He's a he's a Nazi for efficiency. Like he <laughs> yeah. is, he is, he is. Uh, he really, he's really clear, and he really wants to make it clear that the, um, he he uses only the data he needs and only the data mm -hmm. you need. So if there's any, um, I mean, he goes down to the point where he builds an extra setup after cash to get rid of every ounce of data that you're not using, like even yeah. groups. Even sometimes the groups, the container groups that you don't point any particles to, he'll he'll delete those and he'll get rid of that just to make it extremely yep. efficient and fast. So it's yeah. another thing I learned that uh, it's <laughs> very important because you know, and another that's another that's another good point is I do get uh, younger artists who who contact me and they say it's taking forever and why well, you know it looks like you you. You said it only took uh, this many this this X amount of time for you, and it's taking forever for me. So, and then I, again, like you, you look at their build and setup, and there's just so much inefficiencies, so yeah. many <laughs> redundant, uh, um, so many redundant logic that's you're just overbuilding, and it's it's not. You really have to clean it up, and you really have to go and say what what am I overcalculating? What am I using that I don't need to be using? So, P search is a good example. Most people don't know how to use it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, and another thing we have is these black boxes where you can uh, store uh, setups you always uh, use over time. And uh, I, I guess you also build your own personal uh, setups where you just uh, can go into your own personal library and pull out stuff you use often, like uh, crumbling down a building or objects or creating joints or, or all this kind of stuff. So how important is that for your work that you have your built over the years, your personal library of, of tools? Yeah. Um, is that something you use or, or don't you use that at all? Oh, yeah, I definitely, definitely have some some special black boxes that are my go to's. So um, I don't. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. Um, what I have is um, I've got over the years of, of using this, I've been able to evolve my initial setup. So I have I have my own naming and hierarchy um, system. Mm -hmm. and that I always pretty much use every single time, no matter what the, the effect is. So I've been, been able to uh, build that based on my experience of uh, what do I need, what do I don't need. And mm -hmm. so I have a, a starting point. So that would be a black box or I even save it at a, at a, as a 3D Max template. So every time I open okay. <laughs> my, the software, I automatically have Thinking Particles open and it starts with a, um, uh, it has a included group hierarchy uh, and and dynamic set hierarchy and from there I can delete what I don't need and and add on more but it's mostly I just have that and then a couple smaller black boxes that I use from time to time but um, I definitely I, I still enjoy rebuilding everything mm -hmm. from scratch like I, yep. I've seen artists who who take in black boxes and they use maybe 10% of it um, ah, and, yeah. <laughs> and, and I there's the efficiency again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's, so yeah. it's I like uh, some. So another example is when when you have to take over another artist's scene, you take it in, um, and you you spend some time having to figure out what they're actually doing. So yeah. <laughs> so I've always been been used kind of taking bits of what they did and rebuilding mine from scratch because I like mm -hmm. to be, have a clear palette and a clear understanding of what I'm doing. Yeah. So, but yeah, definitely black box is extremely useful. Um, um, Joe, Joe has definitely built a huge library that yeah. has helped me. <laughs> and that's just another good thing. I've been able to reverse engineer a lot of those and understand yeah. better. Um, so it's, yeah. Okay. that's a good tool then. Um, so let us know what project are you working on right now? Can you talk about it? What movie is it or? Um, I would. It's. I could. I could definitely say it's a. Um, it's a big. Like I said before, it's a big uh, Chinese project. Mm -hmm. Working on a, a teaser trailer. Okay. Uh, Is it a kung kung fu movie or it's a mystery? Some, yeah, or? It has some martial arts in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and it's a. 
the idea is it's it's we're trying to gain gain um right now it's gaining international interest rather than just mm-hmm. the Chinese market. But uh, that's definitely another thing that I'm I'm new to and it's it's new water for me is working with with Chinese uh, with the Chinese in, uh, production mm-hmm. in North America. It's easy enough because it's it's the cultural uh, there's a cultural difference that that's a little tough. So yeah. for certain aspects of movies. I don't connect with and I can't understand in China where I would in, in North America and that's vice versa so um, I'm uh, it's 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 gonna be a it should be an international uh, it's gonna have international interest mm-hmm. big blockbuster a lot of fantasy destruction um, okay so so I, I guess there will be dragons and, and these kind of creatures <laughs> in there I'm not sure I'm not too sure of the actual <laughs> details uh, Or as far But as the character. let's say Chinese landscape and and uh, features, yeah. Um, yeah. buildings or whatever. So, h- how did you solve the assets uh, generation then? Because you're now responsible for the effect stuff, right? So uh, you need to make sure that the assets created work in a destruction pipeline, for example. Yes. Because yes. When we get stuff for debugging, it drives us nuts when we see double faces, oh, uh, yeah. vertices all over the place that are not connected to anything. That just kills any uh, yep. dynamic dynamic system. If your assets are crap, your effects will be crap. Oh yeah. Because oh yeah, it, it just yeah. it just kills everything if yeah. you have oh, yeah. a, a that's, crappy yeah. asset in there. So yeah, that's a great point. Um, so uh, where, where do you get these the, your effect stuff now if it's a Chinese production because will you model in in Vancouver or will you get assets from China or will it be a mix or um, probably a mix uh, definitely depending on where where our depart which department in which area is going to be mm-hmm. providing those assets but uh, I do have control over that so that's and that's something that it's a great point that you brought that up it's that is one of the most important parts about dynamics and effects mm-hmm. is the asset. And I always say the more complex the asset as far as the layering, the better your, your effects is going to look. So it really depends on, you know, uh, you see you see m- basic destruction examples and it's, let's say a wall cut and crumbled. If you're just, if you just have one block, like a solid concrete wall with mm-hmm. nothing in it, you can only do so much. But The more you layer on top of it, you give it some plaster, you give it some cables, yeah. you give you know so and so. You it just that that's what that's what brings the life out of this uh, out of the effects. And even at Scanline, even at bigger studios, there's there's always going to be a problem of um, bad assets, right, or in, inappropriately built yeah. model models, right. So you have to be very clear to the, the department, and sometimes they don't know. Sometimes the modelers don't know exactly what we need um, unless we tell them so because they're they're not in our world so they don't know how all the time how, how the, the assets supposed to be built so I'm always very meticulous when it comes to mm-hmm. asset creation it's you know like you said it's it's um, no interpenetration no yep. faces and and usually they're pretty good at that right so if you're a good modeler you can you can uh, create something which with proper edge loops and, and so on but yeah I mean You've seen it. We've all seen it. You bring in those assets, and you know how it feels. It's just pull your hair out. Why? why yeah. Who, what were you thinking? Why? Why do you think this is prop or properly yeah. properly built? So even even outside of effects, like this is yeah. improper geometry. So very important. I always say, if if you're going to build, let's say, a structure or a car or, or some kind of asset, especially a building, let's say. I say try to think about how it's engineered in real life, in world, in world scale. Yeah. Like, how are the how are the beams and the walls put together? Like, look at a blueprint of an actual building, and mock that up and mimic that. And that's that's the best type of, of asset that effects can get because you can control those layers, and you can have control of those layers and um, have them do what you need to. But if it's just a shell with 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 uh, welded verts uh, yeah. <laughs> layers that you need to control, it's that you're going to have a hard time with it. So, I'm still going to be able to control that on on my side in, in our studio here because I have I have the you know I'm pushing that. So I'm I'm teaching asset builders to stay in that mindset to say if it's built this way in real life, 
think about how you built it here or you build it here. So, so you're definitely heading for the Hollywood style quality, also for your Chinese productions. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's the idea. So that you. That's the idea. Yeah. Okay. So you you're hammering on these guys so that they yeah uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, create the quality you want. Yeah, putting the hammer down. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Um. So. You say there there will be destruction and and uh, effects in in that. Um, is it just one project? Is it a bigger one? How, how long will that take? Do do you have an we idea? Have, yeah, we we have a one coming up um, that we're we're in the middle of right now. So um, once once we start getting more information out, possibly uh, some exposure outside. Uh, then I can I can get into more details, but mm -hmm. for now it's yeah we're we're in the process of working on one uh, pretty large one um, with uh, co-producers from Wanda and Alibaba, so which is which is it's gaining big interest in that. So mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, there's there's a couple other um, in-house projects that that ch that uh, our whole company as a whole own the IP to, so those will be coming up as well. But um, yeah, and on top of that, we we do have some North American smaller projects that we're in the middle of now. So, but oh, okay. uh, I think the main, probably the main focus in the last, this last these last few months has been building our infrastructure, um, teaching the uh, uh, kind of teaching some of the Chinese artists on our in our company mm -hmm. how, how the process is in, in North America and how they can how we can best work together. So. Um, and being able to communicate through the cultural difference because that's the biggest that's probably the hardest uh, um, the biggest challenge too is yeah. the cultural difference it's did you get uh, did yeah. you get some coaching or yeah yeah so the first three weeks of me in Beijing I I was I was more being kind of acclimating to the to the uh, to the new dynamic of mm -hmm. China so and then also kind of um, sitting down and, and showing some of the artists how my processes work, uh, how how we do it here, and, and the mm -hmm. process of building. So. So that works for you. So you you could, uh, or you you have the feeling they understand, or. Yeah, it's definitely a challenge, especially when uh, most of them don't speak English. <laughs> yeah, so, so you you work with translators then, obviously. Yeah, yeah, um, as much as possible, and even them mm -hmm. ha and even the translators sometimes have a hard time understanding um, where you know what 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 the what I'm trying to to come across because they're not all you know imagine imagine you're trying to translate something technical that you can't yeah. understand <laughs> and you don't really know how to to portray that or translate over, but. Um, it was it was interesting because I, I think there was a kind of a universal language in in the VFX world, mm -hmm. the VFX world, because there'd be moments where I wouldn't have a translator and I'd be pointing at things on the screen and trying my best to get my point across. <laughs> and there'd be times where they would understand, like, oh yeah, yeah, I, I get it, I get it. Okay. So <laughs> e even without even without the ability to speak to each other, there, there was this kind of weird aura of understanding when it comes to mm -hmm. dynamics and effects because. We're all in it for the same reason, so I think we we yeah. kind of understand. And, and basic physics, everyone experiences uh, this, regardless where you live on our planet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Physics should be the same all over the place. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and and again, too, the problems that these artists or, or these places come up come into um, are the same problems that uh, North American studios come up with, yeah. come into. Myself, Scanline, ILM, well, we all come up with the same problems, so. What was interesting is they, that was most their quite the most questions that they asked were were those bottlenecks that we all mm -hmm. come across. You know, how do yeah. you, how do you transfer to high res? How, what do you do when it doesn't work in this situation? What do you do when the client wants this and you don't have control? And and I basically said, yeah, exactly. What do you do? That's that, <laughs> that that's the that's the majority of the problems uh, that we have, and the, that's the majority of the process is problem solving. Yeah. So. They yeah, kind of and that's also the home. important part uh, of the uh, people in charge, like you, for example, uh, controlling uh, the the effect side there, um, because that's that's important. If you have someone sitting there who has no real understanding and is just uh, the manager type, uh, then then you're in trouble. Oh yeah, just yes. demanding from your people, hey, you have to finish. 
uh, that doesn't help anyone because no, no, no. you need to finish in a clever way yeah. or you will never yeah. finish. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And it's again, it's it's coming out of managing, managing your artists, managing your scenes, managing the time. Yeah. It's all management. And if you manage that properly, you're you're able to uh, to pretty much get away with anything you want. So yeah. building a good relationship with the client, building a good relationship with your team. Um, uh, I mean, it doesn't always go perfect, but if you could do your best to to understand all aspects of the production, then you know at at one at some point, then you're going to have a, a clear path or a more clear path. Basically. Yeah. And, and I guess everyone has its uh, personal strength in inside of these destruction or visual effects uh, um, environment. So. Um, What kind of effects did you do, for example? Everything, or or did you more concentrate on rigid body dynamics and and buildings crumbling, or um, plane crashes, yeah. or car crashes, or whatever? I, I guess there there will be some people that are better in in one section than uh, other people. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, me personally, I I just. I fell in love with destruction. Like I, I uh, mostly rigid body stuff. Um, mm -hmm. it's, you know, I, I, I do, I do with fluids, mostly fire and smoke. Um, I, I tended to stray away from water, um, mm -hmm. just because I, it's, it's made my personal preference. Like I, I rather do rigid body destruction rather than fluids, mostly. Yeah. So, uh, but I do know and uh, and I appreciate how to how fluids work and. And how to apply that, but mm -hmm. if it's a complex enough system, I'd like to focus just on the rigid body stuff, and then have another specialist take over any type of fluid work that it needs. So, uh, but yeah, it's it's the same thing with other artists. It's if you have if you have a um, if you have a set amount of types of effects, um, and you have a set number of, of artists to work on it, it's just finding finding who who and figuring out who. Who likes to do what and who wants to do what? So, yeah. if they all want to do fluids, and you've got a lot of other work to do. Then, you know, you, you either have to sit someone down and say you got to learn this, or try to find someone who is interested in yeah. in the effect that you need. So, yeah, it's and that's the great part about working scanline too. You you had enough, you had that that wide range of interest with between all the artists that yeah. you were able to find someone who, who can do something so well because they love doing it. Like some, so it's like, uh, Goran, he, he loves, he loved doing trees. So he did a lot of trees and <laughs> yeah. That, and his work is insane. It's is, really yeah. that's just another, unbelievable. That's another, it's just, I don't think he's human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's when, when I saw his presentations, he, he's doing these, uh, webinars now, yeah. right now, we are also promoting them. It's amazing yeah. stuff. So uh, people just have yeah. to see it, what he's doing. <laughs> and as I said, we, we never expected that you use TP for this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. It's cool. It's yeah, fantastic. it's cool. Because yeah. you just walk around, you see, you look at what he's doing and you go, I've never, I would never even think to approach yeah. it that way. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and that's the, just the one other point on that point is he, the way he builds his setups doesn't have to be the same way someone else builds the same type of effect. No. effect. I get a lot of questions uh, and that they, people get frustrated as they, and they start to get down on themselves and say, I, I can't, I can't build it like you build it. or I can't build it like they build it. And you go just to use your own approach. You know, yeah. It's the, and he has, yeah, that, he has that's another thing. Approach. Yeah. And that's another thing in thinking particles, which where we see it more as a curse right now, because we allow the user to do everything. And it's it's biting us in the back right now because um, you give all this freedom to the artists, and if you now want to adjust or optimize something, there is uh, always a point where you have to decide: okay, do I take away this freedom? They will kill us if we do it. But if we take away this freedom, this gives us optimization room because then we can enforce some things in the code as well. So it's yeah. always the struggle we have is how much freedom do you give to the artist and how much optimization are you willing to lose for freedom of doing all the crazy things that the people are doing right now. Yeah, so yeah. It's always a battle we have here. Yeah, <laughs> um, and uh, I could see that. And it's a good point. 
when I started when I started learning thinking when the the software I, it, I get, yeah it's just like everyone else the learning curves it it's pretty tough if you're not used to that type of logic um, yeah. rule based logic and yeah it'd be at first you'd think uh, as an up as as a as a fresh learner you want you want to be handed something that kind of takes care of of your needs but at the same time the position I'm in now the the knowledge I have of it and the ability to the, what I've been able to do with it I appreciate it the fact that it has it's you, all your freedom in it so much more yeah. so once you get to a point and being able to understand a certain level of it it's the freedom you have is is priceless so I think and it's you're right it is how, how do you get people interested in it yeah. Without so how, yeah, taking away too much freedom. Yeah. Um, so, I wonder how, how much or how hard is it for you to find people in in China? We we are right now in in a mode where we uh, push a little bit the Chinese market. So we reach out more and more. We try to get more uh, training material in Chinese. We try to organize some webinars uh, for the Chinese market. We have connected to Chinese resellers, uh, Chinese uh, uh, training facility, and, and we're trying to get the knowledge up over there in China. Do, do you find it's complicated to find people uh, of a certain level you need, or uh, you isn't mean, that a problem? You mean uh, knowing the software? Yeah, finding talent, uh, doing uh, visual effects stuff in 3D Studio Max and, and TP, for example. Uh, Because it's it's tough for some companies finding uh, people in America yeah. uh, doing 3D Studio Max and destruction. Um, but how hard is it to get that in China? Or uh, I, I I wouldn't think it's as any harder than here or in North America. Uh, It's 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 I, I from what I've seen it's it's still a huge interest and it's growing, okay. uh, especially with uh, I mean Cedar she's she's a uh, she, she's from China, so she's she's building a relationship over there too and mm -hmm. she's been able to connect so um, that that helps that that's huge too so uh, having that bridge over there yeah um, I don't think it's not as hard as I thought and I'm sure it's the more I. The more I'm working with with uh, with China, the more I'm probably going to find out either how hard or non challenging it is. So I, mm -hmm. it just all depends on. No, I don't think it's as any harder than it is in North America. Okay, that's good. Finding people, so because yeah. I mean here But it's, it's even hard here. So um, yeah, exactly, yeah. and that's what the feeling we, we got uh, yeah. as well we, with the first first uh, webinars we did uh, for TP over there. It's yes, it's the cultural thing, it's the the language and and all this. But once this is all taken care of with uh, local people there and understanding what we say and what we want to show. Um, It's it's pretty the same deal. So they they do the same uh, job and and they understand and they have the same uh, problems and trouble with hardware and how to get things set up and and all this. So it's it's pretty. Oh yeah. It I th I think they had I I feel like sometimes some of the people over there think that the problems they come across that they shouldn't be coming across those problems because they they're not doing something right, but. I'm trying to, um, but more, the more I talk, the more we tell, we talk to them, the more they're finding out. Oh, this, it's a universal thing. It's we're all coming in the same problems. We're all trying yeah. to solve the same issues. So, um, yeah, it's 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 essentially the same here. It, uh, we both are we're both on the same level. Um, so. Okay, so um, we we are reaching our one hour uh, already. So time flies. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, is there anything you want to uh, tell the artists? So are you right now looking for artists, or do you need people, or uh, anything you want to uh, mention? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're I'm I'm certainly searching for for TP artists. Um, it, it, it again. That's a little challenging to find, and obviously finding good talent is always hard. So, yeah, uh, especially in Vancouver. I, I guess 
Vancouver yeah, yeah. is still a hot market for for movie oh, yeah. production and, and visual effects as well. Right? Oh yeah, I mean if you're a good artist in Vancouver, you can name your price. I mean you can, <laughs> you can pretty much go anywhere you want. Um, it doesn't matter what software you use to either. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you're a good artist, then yeah, everyone's gonna someone's gonna pick you up quick. Mm -hmm. So that's that is challenging and and being in this position, it's I'm starting I'm realizing that's a little bit harder than I that I anticipated. So. But I guess it's also about the the team you're you're getting into, yeah. and I know it's nice if you can just uh, pick any uh, prize and all this. But but still, in the end, you want to produce, create something. We 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 are in the, in the artist area, so we are creating stuff that no one has done before. So it's it's also about the creative process. I, I don't think. Yes, the money is important, especially when you live in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's crazy how it's housing there and, and the prices mm -hmm. there. But uh, besides that, you, you also want a cool project. You want a cool job, a cool team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Everything has to work and, and has to be fun as well. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So uh, any more uh, suggestions uh, or uh, um, tips for uh, VFX artists or wannabe VFX artists? That yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think the number one that's question that they ask too is, is how do you, what, what can you, what can I do to, to amplify my, or speed up the process of actually working in the industry? Uh, I always just say the same thing. It's um, take the software, experiment over and over, and get to a point where you, you're comfortable enough to, to be able to control things in that um, uh, and just experiment and throw some of your best work on online. Um, I mean, YouTube, Vimeo, Vimeo is the best place to go. Mm -hmm. Now in China, all this stuff's blocked. So they use Yuku, mm -hmm. which if you're in China watching this, Yuku is the best, best place to go to, or if you can somehow get access. Yeah, we are also on Yuku, yeah, by the way. Yeah. So. But it's just, it's begin. just experimenting yeah. and yeah. getting to a point where you, you like what you're doing and you like, you think it looks good and, and getting the, and getting feedback from, from other artists and okay. you know, just post it. because uh, the number one, I mean, the number one way of, of finding talent is through Vimeo, YouTube and seeing these, uh, uh, these experimental works from, from people so and that's that's really how I got the job at first mm -hmm. okay first uh, and, and you are also still picking on talent so yeah. if, if the demo reel uh, looks good and the person uh, saying he did it actually can do it then uh, you're fine with them right yeah There's yeah yeah I mean a lot, a lot of a lot of uh, upcoming artists are all have the same concern as is no experience and they always yeah. say how, how do you get a job with no experience and I always say you don't need experience it's it, it's helpful people, most yeah. people once most studios would like experience but if you just throw your your own work up there with your own experiments and it looks good enough you know what you're doing you can get a job anywhere and any, anyone's yeah. gonna hire you so um, and especially a demo reel like yeah again I've, I've I've seen demo reels with really great looking work and then you, you end up finding out what they did in it it was mm -hmm. it was a little tiny little puff of smoke way back in the corner there of this big yeah. shot and so you get you get those misleading things too. yeah but that that's the industry that's, it is that's, yeah, yeah. Uh, we all have to live with that <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah it's i love seeing people who aren't in the industry i love seeing experiments online and seeing awesome mm -hmm. stuff so that's yeah. uh that's huge Okay, good. Uh, then I'll, I'll uh, wrap this up here. Um, first, I want to thank you very much for this interview. It was really nice chatting with you, uh, getting the uh, uh, information from you. And um, yeah, thanks for watching here. Thanks, as thanks, well. Edwin. And you guys are in Victoria, so feel free to yeah. come by the studio. And uh, we'll. Uh, I will. Tour. I will. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank you so much, thanks, Edwin. All right. Goodbye. See ya.